guys, it's finally October, so that means we can finally start working on some spooky projects. Now, I have a few ideas for the month, and I kind of want to gradually increase the, like, creepy factor. So I'm going to start off with something a little bit on the eerie side, but not, like, super creepy. And then next tutorial is going to be kind of on the creepy cute side, and then we're going to do something really, really big. <laughs> At least that's what I've got planned. Anyways, today I'm going to be making a ghostly raven griffin. We're going to be using a clay head that I made in a previous tutorial on how to make poseable beaks. I ended up making a raven head for that project and I thought it'd be really cool to make a griffin raven instead of just a plain raven. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so like I said, the head for this piece, along with the posable beak, I made in a previous tutorial. So if you want to see how I made that, go ahead and check the links down below in the description. I'll have that along with the tutorial on how I ended up doing the posable feet. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to start painting our clay head. And so at first, I was thinking of doing an all black raven piece, but I wanted to do something just a little bit different, and I figured adding more blues and stuff like that would make it look more ghostly, and then I realized that white would look a lot better with the blues. So our color scheme for our raven griffin is going to be dark blue, cyan blue, and then some white. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start by primering the entire face with a dark blue. I'm even going to go over our resin beak because I just didn't really care for the color. Once I knew what I wanted the raven to look like, the color of the beak just didn't match. So I'm going to go over that as well. And then once my blue layer has dried, I'm going to start adding some brighter highlights. And then I'm also going to darken up the beak because I don't want that to be a dark blue. I want that to be more of a black. So I'm going to get all the colors and everything done on the face. I don't need to go into super detail because we're going to be pretty much furring the entire face. I know I'm saying furring, but technically it's feathering, but I'm using fur fabric. You know what I mean. But anyways, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to let everything dry, and then I'm going to take a tool and scratch away any paint that got on our glass eyes. And then for our feet, I'm going to be having them, like I said earlier, poseable, but we are going to have some claws for them. So these I made ahead of time out of resin, and we're just going to be painting over them to add whatever colors that we want to use. I ended up deciding that the front feet should be more of a gray for our raven. So I'm going to go over all of my claws first with a gray, just primering everything, and then the actual claw, not the entire piece, I'm going to go over with a black and darken that up. I mainly just want the skin around the base of the claw to be that gray color. And then for the back legs, these are going to be resin as well. So I'm just going to paint them really quickly to match the color of the back of the body, which is going to be white. So pretty simple, we're just going to paint everything a solid white. The only major details that I want to add to this are the claws, and I'm going to paint them a light blue to go with the other blues of the body. Once I have all of my resin and clay pieces painted, I'm going to obviously let them dry a little bit longer to make sure they're completely dry, and then I'm going to mix up some more resin and just paint it over the surfaces that I want to protect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our sewing. Okay, so this is just the pattern for the body. We'll work on the wings after we get this done, or at least started. Now you'll notice that I have a bunch of different lines sketched out onto all of my patterns, and that's because I'm gonna be breaking up my patterns into multiple different pieces of fabric to get different colors in different places. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the main body first. The main body is going to have three different colors, a dark blue, a lighter blue, which is our cyan, and then a white, which is also a shorter fur fabric. And the main reason for this is because of our mane. I'm going to have that fade from a darker to a lighter color, and I'm also going to have it longer to shorter. 
So I'm gonna sew all three of these pieces together for each side of the body, and then I'm going to also take the fabric for the belly, which is mainly going to be fabric for the mane. We're not gonna extend the belly into the white fur fabric. So the belly fabric is only going to be the dark blue and the cyan. And then once we have the belly piece put together, we're then going to take that and sew the two body pieces also to this. So we're gonna connect all three of the fabric pieces that we have. And then for the tail, we're going to have strips of white fur fabric that are kind of curved. And we're gonna also have cyan tips for this that are going to be the fluff at the very end of the tail. So I'm gonna connect these two pieces together and then I can sew the two sides of the tail together. Now the tail is really thin. I am gonna add a little bit of stuffing to the very end of it, but the main body of the tail, I'm not gonna stuff. And then for the legs, I'm gonna start with the front legs first. The very top portion of the leg is going to be our dark fur fabric, but the majority of our leg is going to be a shorter gray fabric. And the reason I'm using this fur fabric is it's a lot shorter and it'll look more bird-like, not being so fluffy. So I'm gonna sew those together and then each leg has a front and back that I'm also going to attach together. And I'm just gonna sew these down the fronts of them. And for the back legs, these are going to be a lot easier. They're just going to be one fabric. So we have a front and back and we're just going to sew these together the same way, just right down the fronts of them. Okay, so that's the majority of the sewing that we can do on the body right now. I'm gonna move on to doing the wings. Now for the wings, I'm gonna try something a little bit different because I wanted to see if I could make them out of something other than felt. Felt tends to shed a little bit and I just wanted them to hold their shape a little bit more. So what I'm gonna be doing is I have some fake leather that I'm going to use to make the feathers. So I'm gonna start with the larger feathers first and I wanna have it to where you don't see the backing of our fake leather. So I'm gonna start by having the first pieces cut out and I'm gonna pin them to another piece of fake leather that isn't cut out yet because it's just going to be easier to cut the second layer out afterwards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these together. I'm gonna start at the base first and then I'm gonna go down each feather to add the little middle portion of the feather to make it look more realistic and to hold the feathers together a bit more. Once I have everything sewn together, I'm then going to cut off any excess leather that I have on the backing of our wing. I'm then going to take our smaller layers for our feathers and I'm going to pin one on each side of our feathers that we currently have. And I'm just going to attach these at the very base. I'm not gonna do any of the extra sewing that we did on the first feathers. For the rest of the feathering for the wing, what we're gonna be doing is using our fur fabric. That way we have some fluffiness to our wings. So the under portion of the wing, I decided I wanted the cyan, and then the top portion of the wing, I wanted the darker blue. So I'm going to start sewing both of these pieces of fabric to our wings, and I'm just gonna follow the lines of where we have all the fake leather sewn together. Okay, so now that we have everything kind of prepped, we're gonna start adding everything to a wireframe. So I made my wireframe ahead of time. I have it slightly reinforced in the front because the head is a little bit heavy and we're just going to take the main body first. We're gonna figure out where all the wires for the legs are going to go, cut some tiny little holes for that and then slide our fabric body over our wireframe, just like we're putting on clothes on a doll. Then I'm going to take our raven's head and we're going to attach it to the wire for the neck. So I'm just going to add some glue into the back of the head and we're going to push that wire into the back of the head into that glue. Hold it for a little bit to let that dry and then we're going to take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head. Next, I'm going to take the fabric for the tail and I'm going to run it over the wire for the tail. Once we have that slid over the wire, we can then sew the base of the tail to the very backing of our body fabric. Now for the wings, what we're gonna do is they have their own wire frame. We're going to sew them onto that wire frame and then we can attach them to the other wire frame. So I'm just going to slide the fabric over the wire frame for each wing and the very top of the wing is open. So we're just going to slide that over and close that up. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to take a little bit of extra fabric. This is going to kind of keep the wings separate and we're going to sew that in place and start closing up the body. While we're closing up the body, we're going to make sure to stuff everything. Now, once we have the body done, before we add the legs to it, we need to start shaving our fur fabric. So I'm going to take my hair trimmer and I'm going to trim up the sides and just kind of clean everything up so it'll be easier to add the limbs. Once we have everything shaven and we like how it looks, we can start adding the legs. I'm gonna start with the back legs first. So I'm gonna take the fabric for the back legs. I'm going to figure out where it needs to go around the wire that's hanging out for the leg. I'm gonna sew it in place and then we're going to take our resined feet that we have for the back legs and we're going to attach them to the wire frame. So I have a little extra wire. I'm gonna adjust the length of it to make sure they're correct for the length of the legs. We're going to glue those to the wire frame and then we're going to take the fabric and glue it around the bases of our feet. Once that glue has dried we can stuff and close up the backs of our legs. These are also going to get shaven by the way. And then the front legs are pretty much the same. We're going to sew the fabric for them in place And then with the feet, like I said earlier, these are poseable and I'm going to have the tutorial link down below if you want to see how to make poseable feet. But what we're going to do is we're going to connect the wireframes inside of these to the wireframe of the body. So each leg we're just going to take and we're going to wrap those together and then we can take the fabrics and sew the base of our foot to the base of our leg. Once that's put together, we can stuff the rest of the leg and close it up. I'm going to do a little bit of shaving to the furry portion of the front legs and then we can move on to our finishing details. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some scaling kind of features to the fronts of our front legs. For this, I'm going to take our fabric markers and I'm just going to add some little lines. I'm going to draw those really quickly down the fronts of our feet and our toes and before they're completely dry, I just kind of smeared them downwards to add a little bit of a gradient. And then after that, we just need to fur our back legs and our face. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to cut some fur pieces to fit our face. The larger portions are going to be just cut pieces of fur fabric. But once we get closer to the other details, I'm going to use really tiny fur trimmings and I'm going to glue those in place. So I'm just going to kind of paint on my glue where I want everything to go. And I'm going to press my fur into the glue, lay everything out get it positioned where I like it and we're going to let that dry. And again, I'm going to do that to the face and then I'm also going to do it to the back legs. And then once everything is dried, I'm going to brush away any fur that hasn't stuck into the glue. And then for the face, I'm going to paint on just a little bit of extra detail. I'm going to kind of darken up some areas and then add a tiny bit of a highlight here and there. Okay guys, and here is our ghostly raven griffin. I had so much fun with this project. I definitely want to make more griffins because it's just, it's one of those things that I make every now and again, but I don't make enough of. But yeah, here he is. I had so much fun with him. Just a reminder, the tutorial for the posable beak I'll have linked down below along with the posable feet tutorial that I recently did so you guys can see how I made both of these. And then I'm going to also have him in my Etsy shop so if anyone is interested in giving him a new home you can check the links down below for that as well. And of course if you guys are interested in making your own art dolls or you just want to see what art supplies I like to use to make mine I have those linked down there too. And of course just a reminder those are affiliate links so if you get anything through them they do help support the channel. And thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like subscribe to all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!